Welcome to week 15. It's hard to believe that we only have two more weeks of class this week and next week. And then finals begin. I hope you all had a good weekend. I want to start off with our weekly announcements for this week and say, I'm sorry if I caused any confusion last night. I began grading uh, the discussion forum from last week that the second post wasn't due until 11.59 p.m. So uh, I appreciate a couple of you who um, emailed me and let me know that. So I sent an email out last night um, saying I would be regrading those, and I've already done those this morning. So once again, sorry for the confusion on my part. I do want to um, uh, share with you an observation that I've had as I grade work and I get your emails. Uh, the first thing I want to say is the majority of you are doing a really nice job being very detail oriented, meaning you're reading the assignments closely and you're paying attention to nuances of the assignment as well as um, when the assignment is due. That is so important because in healthcare, to be honest, in all fields, but particularly healthcare, details really matter. We have a saying that you have to dot your I's and cross your T's or people die. And that does happen. If we get a little bit sloppy or a little bit lazy in terms of reading instructions or documenting charts, then mistakes happen. And medical errors are one of the most common causes of death. Um, of patients. And so part of the reason everything is so detailed in our class and that I do take off points when you don't follow um, directions is because I want to really emphasize that the classroom is like the workforce. And if you learn how to do things in the classroom, they'll transfer to the workforce. So um, for those of you who are struggling a little bit with some of that, try in these last few weeks and for your final to really um, pick that up a notch. It shows an increased level of professionalism and it lets me know that you're being intentional about how you're reading. All right, so let me talk a little bit about a couple things from the last week or two. So I'm enjoying continuing to um, think about how you all are uh, designing your life. When I look at your reflections on the workbook activities and the questions that I've been asked or you've been asked, I will say that um, I thought it was interesting for in the Odyssey plans for life three, which is where money and um, what people say doesn't matter. Many of you just decided you're going to go off and live at the beach and do nothing. Um, the idea, if you really read the chapter well, is to think of a third type of work that you were going to do. And some of you went to the beach and you were going to open up little cafes or things down there, which is great. Um, but to think that you're going to spend your life and do nothing, um, the literature shows will not bring you very good life satisfaction. You won't be happy in the long run. As a matter of fact, I talked um, earlier in the semester about um, the fact that we know that when individuals have a life of meaning and purpose, then they tend to have greater life satisfaction than people that just seek pleasure all the time. So for those of you who, um, on your third one, you were just going to go to the beach and do nothing your whole life. Um, Try to rethink that. The idea for that was we often make judgments and we stop ourselves from doing things we want to do. And when we do that, it doesn't allow us to really be free to design. So the idea for number three is to really think about what you would do if you didn't have to worry about having a certain salary or disappointing someone because they expected you to be X in life. Um, and some of you had some really cool uh, thoughts and ideas um, regarding that. All right, so the next thing is I wanted to give you a little feedback on the uh, assignment related to um, the case studies 
demonstrating cultural competence. Uh, there were two pregnant women, and they um, had different religious backgrounds that, because of their beliefs, led them to make some decisions about their health care that would be different than maybe what we typical, typically see in patients. So one woman was Jehovah Witness, and one woman was Muslim. You all came up with some really great ideas, and I could tell you had looked into it. And the um, feedback you gave each other when you read each other's posts um, was good. Uh, on a side note, I just want to say that, remember, read really carefully. Some of you did literally 10 posts because you answered to 10 people or you only answered to one person. Read the directions. I asked you to read 10 people's um, posts and then write a summary post about that. So both of these patients I have actually um, been exposed to in my practice. Um, the woman who was Jehovah Witness actually almost died. She had um, a very complicated surgical procedure and it was a C-section, but she was extremely, um, uh, had an awful lot of blood loss during the C-section. And she, um, the main thing is, is that we gave her a very thorough informed consent beforehand, meaning she understood that we would respect her right not to give blood. And we would, at the same time, use other alternative ways to resuscitate her and give her blood volume or substitutes for blood that she gave us permission before the surgery but you better believe that we documented extremely well multiple times that we had had thorough conversations with her and that she refused blood treatment um, or blood transfusion and knew that she would rather die than get a blood transfusion. So we had to make sure, A, that she was well informed and we gave her autonomy to make that decision, even though we might disagree with it for ourselves and have an awful hard time potentially seeing her die, knowing we could have saved her life. Um, and then also at the same time, covering any exposure we may have to the family later on saying she never said that, and then a lawsuit being brought against us. So we had to document well to protect ourselves too. Um, and it makes sure that once again, we were very detail oriented and um, helped her understand her rights and helped us protect ourselves. The second woman, the woman who's Muslim, y'all brought up some really great things um, ranging from gender issues where um, uh, female patients often don't, are not even allowed to see a male patient to concerns with um, fasting that may occur, um, clothing and uh, exposure of their bodies. Um, and then even the concept of the fact that um, individuals who are Muslim have a regular prayer and that prayer needs to be directed um, in a certain um, uh, uh, location and respecting that. So uh, I was pleased with how you all answered this and I think the most important thing is this brings back that concept of one, us being culturally competent, so us understanding and working with people of a wide variety of belief systems and us respecting patient autonomy. Uh, in that process. So um, nice job with that activity too. So let's move on and talk about this week's um, assignments. So I really want to try with life design is to take you from that thinking piece to some practical pieces these last few weeks of the semester so you can walk away with um, some real tangible ways that you can keep working on designing your life. All right. 
So um, I'll get to those, but the first thing that is due this week, which is due on Wednesday, is a video. It's a TED Talk, and it's very entertaining, and you have a um, some questions related to that that I want you to respond to. Please note that is due Wednesday. That's your that's your one thing that is due early this week. There is no discussion forum this week. We're getting um, towards the end of the semester and um, it works better, I think, to get some of these practical um, assignments done if you um, kind of do them on your own independently. So the second weekly lecture is your first practical opportunity and this is to prototype a network. I'm going to go ahead and open this and it's going to be really important that you understand this and read this very carefully. I have mentioned to you before about the AHEC Scholars Program. This is a really great two-year program. It is a federal grant that I would love for you all to consider taking advantage of. Everybody in the class is going to complete the application that I have attached. However, I want you to notice that the purpose of completing the application is twofold. When you read the directions, you'll understand this. The first is to give you practice on a grant application or an application for um, a, a program. The second is for you to actually apply to the AHEC Scholars Program and try to compete for one of the 15 spots. And so what I want you to do is read this carefully. The first thing you're asked to do is go to this link and learn more about the AHEC Scholars Program. And to get your 20 points, you have to complete this application. All right. Now, I have in bold letters, read, very important. If you would like to formally submit your application and be considered for one of the 15 spots for the program that start in the fall, you need to follow the directions on the application. It'll tell you where to send it. It's to the AHEC office. The grant does require you to be an exercise science, health promotion, gerontology, or healthcare administration major. So if you're one of those, you can consider applying. If you're not, unfortunately, you can't apply to the program. The second prerequisite is you need to have at least two more years that you'll be at Barton. So you either need to be a junior, so you have your junior and senior year, or if you're a rising senior, you could actually do it as a senior and during the master's program if you're going to stay for a master's degree. You cannot do it if you only have one year left. And um, just note that this is due July 1, but the sooner you get this in, the better. Um, and that way you don't get going through summer and forget this. All right, so let's go back to the module and look at the next assignment for week 15 here. Okay, so um, your, your weekly um, reading is going to be Chapter 8 and 9, which is um, in the Design Your Life book, and there'll be some workbook activities that go with this. And then your final lecture and your second practical opportunity is writing a draft resume and a cover letter. So um, as you read the chapters about networking, and especially you're going to be um, reading the chapter about um, how not to get a job, um, what you're going to find is how to use a resume and the best way to make it part of your advantage. And what I really want you to do is not to end the semester with the exact resume you're always going to have, but I want you to just be introduced to some of the most current recommendations with resumes. They're really different than potentially what you learned in high school. Now, they may be the same. But um, you're going to learn to do a draft resume and a cover letter. And um, Miss Angie Walston, who works at the college, is actually developing a video. Excuse me. <clears throat> so this assignment is not going to be published. You won't see it. Um, uh, well, actually, I'll go ahead and publish it, but it's not ready for you to start. So go ahead and start your other activities. And then this will be ready probably in the next couple days. All right. I look forward to um, grading everything from last week. Please continue emailing me if you have a question. Also, 
Um, watch your grades. Sometimes I accidentally put the wrong one in, so if you're worried, let me know.